little weapon of the week. Someone asked, do you have some baby-looking uh, bamboo swords, juktos, in your uh, studio? And uh, yes, you can get kids that actually they make the gear for this small, and, and this could be an appropriate size sword. Um, uh, I do teach down to age seven. Generally, it's not this small, but uh, they, they do make the gear. Uh, they go to gear for is pretty small. Um, but no, uh, what I've been using there, what we use these swords for when we do two sword fighting, and the first sword that you hold uh, is only for blocking. You can't score points with this. So basically, like your shield arm, um, and whether or not you do it left or right depends on the school. I prefer to use my dominant arm for the big sword, but uh, I believe it or not, I actually had to learn it the other way, um, which was rather uncomfortable. But at any rate, um, holding the sword like you normally would at the top near the hilt for this one. And then you would take your regular size adult uh, bamboo sword and instead of holding it at the top of it and where your other hand would come in below here at the base, you're actually going to hold it only below at the base with the same way that you would with the bottom hand with the last finger curled around so that you can effectively still do stab motions too if necessary. And, you know, um, I, I don't do this as often, but uh, I do, you know, I do every once in a while uh, when I'm using my, my, uh, my gumbo uh, dummy here that I created, the uh, uh, carpet padding, uh, duct tape around water noodles, and a uh, four, by, 4 by 4 and 2 by 4 uh, creation here so that I would have something to beat with the sticks that had a little more give to it, uh, unlike the bob, um, and then created this uh, actually before I got bob. But anyway, uh, so from yesteryears. But for this, uh, we would typically bow in the smaller sword, you know, uh, support the weight of the larger sword. Terry, can I baldo? Same baldo as your ready stance, and you would give your yo, yo, and that lets you know that you're ready to fight. Here, that are coming into your space, and how you hold it typically is like this. Again, shield arm, you've got your high block, low block, uh, side block, side block. That's basically it. And trapping, where you trap the sword on one side or the other, um, you know, uh, if you can, if it's possible, or even flip uh, the shinai or the, what they call in Korean, uh, the jukdo out of their hand. Um, uh, I'm not as good with the blocking, honestly. But this I do like because it resembles just like the, the child bow staff or a whip or something like that. You know, you can get a, you can get a lot of power with this. So when you're sparring with someone, you definitely gotta be wearing gear for this. And it's a it's a new experience to try and uh, defend yourself because the person with the smaller sword is definitely gonna be faster than you and get more hits on, on you. So if you can if you can keep them at bay and at distance with your longer swinging strike and actually have the muscle in order to do this, it gets tiring actually after a while. And be able to effectively use this as a shield. It's a, it's a whole different, it's, it's more what the fighting actually used to be with, you know, shield and, and sword in the old days or whatever. So it's, uh, it's actually unusual, but because in, uh, in traditional uh, gumbo, when you're sparring, you, there's no shield. You're just man to man and you hit, you hit, you know, and, and that's how it goes. So anyway, so just some basics of whatever you, you high lock, okay? You can come down on a wrist strike, where you come down on a waist, where you can come down, you know, even on the opposite side. Okay, same thing low. I prefer to go low, high, high, low. I like getting a little spin there because it's so large, just get it. And the striking zone for these, again, uh, is in between here and here. If you don't strike in between here and here, it's not technically a point. So if you were to hit or you get tied up and you hit and it's all the way up here on the sword, they won't count it generally uh, if you're being strict referee or whatever. But anyway. Uh, so just to play around with it a little bit, make a quick little video. Uh, but yeah, two two handed sword was something we used to actually do in the old studio, and just uh, it was humbling experience because you would get really good with one sword, and all of a sudden then they introduce two swords, usually at red or black belt level, and you're just terrible at it. And then the people will be whacking you in the head, and you're like can't defend yourself because you don't you're not used to blocking, and you're, you you didn't know what you're doing because you didn't start with doing two swords at the very beginning. So anyways, so you can do a side block, and then you can do the other way. Down on the head, and crump, and then uh, see, so keeping them at distance. The distance is your advantage. They've got the short when they're just like this, and they're holding up the hill. 
they're up close. So you, you effectively want to keep them at bay and score your points if possible. Um, same thing with the up and down. So if they're coming and you block, then you can come down without hitting your own sword, like in the video here. And then if they're coming in that way, quickly trap them, get your other point. Same thing on the other side. But that is effectively, you know. And then both the other combinations. You know, and as long as you're hitting uh, ooh muddy or joa muddy, but it's muddy, it's supposed to be on the top of the head, not in the ear, just no padding on the side of the helmet. Um, of course, huddy, huddy is waist and even honey in the front, depending on whether or not they've moved to the side. Um, that's for the, the, the waist plate. And then uh, this is symbolizing uh, the wrist. As if someone else was holding a sword, you can attack the right hand wrist, and that scores a point. You're disarming them effectively. Um, so that's either a point, point, or point. Um, we don't really do the stab as much, just because it's dangerous. Uh, when we use this bar, but you know, obviously you can do hook, which is to the neck as well as score point. Um, but yeah, two-handed sword, very humbly, actually go up against it when he knows what they're doing, or they're doing no, no, they're swinging that little sword actually very fast, and you just can't keep up. But uh, if you can get good at this, it does look cool. And I'm not an expert, and it's hard to sitting like this if there's no one actually swinging at me. But you know, you can try combinations. And then trappings. And with this one, it's eh, or, you know. But uh, by no means, I'm an expert. I haven't done this in a very long time. And again, you're a lot slower. And it tires out your arm a lot quicker. But it's fun to do. And someone asked me about the baby sword, so make it a video. Alright, so that's it for the weapon of the week. And when I get my students in here again, I'm hoping to make another Hapkido video. Thanks a lot.